Hello everybody, this is Kaizen here and welcome to my Redstone tutorial series. Now in this series I'm going to teach you everything there is to know about Redstone from the very basic concepts right through to the very advanced stuff. Now today is of course the first episode in this series so we are starting off with just the basic stuff and there's four parts to this episode. Firstly, obtaining Redstone in the first place, then the fundamentals of Redstone, followed by the different power sources and then I'm going to teach you some basic circuits so you can put the things you learn in today's episode into practice in your own Minecraft worlds. So for the obtaining, this is redstone ore right here, and it can be found in the bottom 16 Y levels of your map. So basically you have to go mining for it. Now although you can find it in loot chests and things like that, if you want to get a lot of this stuff, you're really going to have to go mining for it. So to go mining for it, you're going to need a minimum of an iron pickaxe. And you'll see here, if I mine it with iron, I get a little bit of experience, and also I've picked up some redstone dust there. You can silk touch it as well if you want to pick up just the ore block, like that. And also Fortune 3 works on it as well. Well, all of the fortunes do, of course. And then, of course, you can get higher drop rates. So if you want a lot of redstone dust, then definitely Fortune 3 is going to be the way to go. Now, once you've got your redstone dust, there are two essential basic things you can build with it. Now, it is used in a lot more recipes than just these two, of course, but these are the basics, and these are the ones we're going to look at in today's episode. So there is first of all the redstone torch, which is very simple, just one stick and one redstone dust like that. And secondly, there is the block of redstone, and that can be made by putting nine redstone dust in a crafting bench just like this. Okay, so now we've obtained it, I'm just going to teach you some very basic things and some things about the behavior of redstone. So first of all, once it's been placed, water will break it, as you can see there. So... If you're ever building and you've got uh, water near your redstone builds, obviously be careful with that. The second thing is, redstone dust cannot be placed on glass. It can be placed on just about anything else other than that, uh, apart from stairs and slabs at this level. However, if you upturn the stairs, or if the slab is placed at the full block level, it can then be placed in that way. Now, if you want to make redstone go upstairs like this, it's very simple. You simply place it on top of the stairs, and it naturally follows up like that. However, if I were to place a block like this, and if we hop into game mode C so I can fly, I'll show you this a bit better, you'll see that this is now broken. If we destroy that block, the connection comes back. But essentially, once we do this, we're breaking the circuit. So it cannot pass through blocks like that when there's a block here. It can if there isn't. So that's just some basic things about how you can place redstone and, uh, and obviously, let's say, the water breaking it and that sort of thing. Now, redstone dust, if it's just placed on its own like this, is pretty useless, to be honest. Um, the whole point of redstone is, of course, to power it and then to do things with that power. So, the most basic way to power anything with redstone is by making a lever. And that is simply a cobblestone and a stick in this order, like that. Now, once you have one of those, you can right-click it. And that right now is off. You'll see the lamps are off. And the dust is this brownish color with no particles. If we right-click again, it comes on. And you can see that by the lamps being on. But also, if you look at the redstone dust, you'll see that it's gone this reddish colour instead of the brown, and it's got particles coming off of it. Now, this fully powers redstone, and we'll come into the different types of power later on, but for now, we can think of this as being on and fully powered, and we'll see that when we have a fully powered redstone source like that, it will travel for 15 blocks. Once you get to the 16th block, this lamp is no longer lit up, and there is no power here. You can also see that there's a few particles still here on this red one, even though there was more at the beginning, it's sort of a brighter red and there's more particles, it gets duller as it goes along the circuit until it eventually gets to no particles and a very brown colour just like this. Now, redstone circuits uh, that travel for 15 blocks like that uh, can be extended and you do that using a redstone repeater and the recipe for that is very simple, you just need three stone like that, two redstone torches and one redstone dust in between them and then you get yourself a repeater which looks like this. So, if we look at this circuit here, we'll see that this is the same as this circuit, but it's been extended. Now what's happened is we've placed the repeater here on the 16th block, so just as that runs out of power, we repeat the signal and it powers all of these lamps like this, and you'll see it went from the 16th right up here to the 31st. So a repeater extends the signal by 15 blocks, and that's why it stopped there on the 31st, and on 32 we have no more power. However, we could, if we wanted to, get another repeater here, and we could place it right there like that, and then put more dust going off of that, and we can do that as many times as we like. So once the redstone circuit comes to an end, you can place a repeater, and it will extend it for another 15 blocks, just like that. Now, a couple of things to mention about repeaters. Uh, first of all, 
they are directional. So you'll see it works if I place it like that. But if I were to place it like this, or like this, or indeed like this, it does not work. Now, to tell what direction it travels in, you can see on the repeater here, there's kind of an arrow shape like this. And of course, the current flows in the direction that the arrow is pointing, just like that. The second thing to note with the repeater is that went from block 16, and that's how it got the full length. If we came down to, say, block 10, for example, and placed our repeater there, only the blocks up to 25 would be lit, and from 26 onwards, it would not be lit. Now, similarly, if we go past block 16, when we try to place it and we put our repeater here, nothing will happen because it's already out of power by the time we get there. So it needs to be placed connected to power to repeat that power onwards. Now, you'll also notice that the block right here is not lit, this lamp right here. Now, don't worry too much about that. The whole point of this right now is just to show you that repeaters extend the circuit onwards. Uh, for things where you would need this to be lit, there are ways of doing that, um, but that's not something to be concerned about just yet. So that is the redstone repeater, and you'll find it's very useful uh, in your redstone circuits. I just want to clear up some space in my inventory here and show you something really quickly about the repeaters. First of all, uh, if we place this lever here on, you'll see that the light turns on just about instantly and same when it turns off. Now with repeaters, there is a slight delay. And in a circuit like that, where you have just one like that, you're not really going to notice it too much. But if we see here, when we've got several in a row, and we do that, you can see the power traveling along it. It takes a second before it lights the light on, and then it takes another second or so before the light turns off afterwards. So repeaters do add a slight delay to your circuit. Now, redstone timing and ticks and things like that is a bit more of an advanced concept, and it's something that we'll come on to later on into the series. But for now, I just wanted to make you guys aware that when you place a redstone repeater, it does add a slight delay to the circuit. One final thing to mention about powering uh, your redstone circuits is you'll see here that uh, this lever, when flicked, still powers that light. Even though there's a block there and it's on the block instead of directly powering this, it indirectly powers it through the block. So that can be quite useful, particularly if you want to hide any of your redstone wiring. You can place the lever on a wall and do the redstone behind the wall to sort of tidy it up a bit and keep things looking quite nice. So the next thing I wanted to move on to today was the sources. Now, in redstone, you have constant sources and you have variable sources, which we'll come on to. The constant sources, there's really only three. That is the lever, which is the most common, and that can be in the on or off position. Now, it's constant because it's either constantly off or constantly on. And there are no sort of, I don't turn it off and then in a minute it comes back on of its own accord. I have to actually be the one to flick that switch. The second is the redstone torch, which I showed you earlier. And once placed, that's just constantly on. And the only way for me to turn it off would be to break the torch or to break part of the circuit. And the redstone block is exactly the same. It's always on once it's been placed, and the only way to get rid of it would be to break it. So those are constant power sources. Now, there are a whole ton of variable sources, and I mean loads. But today, we're just going to focus on the button. The reason for that is the button is by far the most common of the variable sources that you will be using. And you can see here, if we flick it, it sends a redstone signal, but only a brief one. So it's not like the lever where it just stays on or off, it can be toggled. So as you can see, there are two types of button. There's the wooden button, which can be made simply by putting one plank in a crafting bench. And the way that uh, it works, you can use any plank you want and you'll create your button. And if you want the stone button, then you do one stone and it has to be smooth stone, it can't be cobblestone. So you'll see here, if I flick the wooden button, the signal travels along and the light goes on. Same with the stone button, but for a slightly shorter period of time. So there's the wooden one again, and the stone one. So slightly different uh, amounts of time for each one. And again, we'll come on to timing a lot more in the future. And again, these buttons work by being powered through the block as well. So they can directly power or they can power it through the block here like that. So that is the variable power sources and the constant power sources and some very basic circuits. Now I'm keeping things very simple for this episode because I don't want to overwhelm you all at once, but hopefully that's given you a little bit of an idea about redstone and how it works. And what I want to do now is just move on to some very basic circuits to show you how some of the things that we've done today can be put into practice in your worlds. So the first one is you may have a house or a room that you want to be constantly lit up to prevent mobs from spawning. This is, of course, very common in Minecraft for people to have their rooms constantly lit up if they're indoors. Um, so instead of using torches, you could do it with these wonderful redstone lamps. And the recipe for a redstone lamp is as follows. One glowstone block in the middle with four redstone around it in this diamond shape. 
Now, if you want these on constantly, it's very simple. We just use one of our constant power sources. So here I've used a redstone torch. It's a very simple circuit to then light them up. And it's a nice little effect to have in your house instead of just using the torches. I'm just going to set the time back to zero real quickly. Um, the second thing is you may want to have a room where you can turn the lights on or off. And it's actually very simple to do that. So you'll see here, if I flick this switch, the lights come on. And if I flick it again, they'll go off. Now this can be especially useful if you have a mob spawner and you want it to be active at some times but not at others. Perhaps you're setting up a mob farm and uh, you're going to use the uh, you know farm the XP and that sort of thing. Well, if you turn the lights on, it will stop the mobs from spawning and then when you want the spawn, you just whack them off. Now the circuit for that is very simple. So the blue block is where our lever is and you can see all I've done is what I showed you over there, run the redstone wiring up here like this and onto these lamps. So it's very simple to do, but it can be quite an effective, uh, useful thing in the game, especially, as I say, with things like mob spawners. Now, with the uh, variable signals, a lot of the uh, pulse signals, which is what a button essentially is, um, are used in much more advanced circuits that I wouldn't be going into today. However, one very useful thing with a pulse circuit is with minecart stations. So if we get in our minecart here, and this isn't powered, our minecart stays there like that, and it's ready for us to get in whenever we want. Now at the other end I've got a powered one where it's constantly powered to show you the difference and why the pulse generator is so much better for this. So we come in here, we hit the button and it sends us on our way. But when it's constantly powered like this, we get sent right back again. However, you can see that when you're on a uh, button like this and it's no longer powered, it stops. And that's really useful if you want to create different minecart stations in your world. So essentially what we can do now is get in here and push the button, go off to the next station and we can just leave our cart there then when we're ready, hop in and travel back again. So obviously, like I say, very basic stuff for this first episode, but still quite useful if you like to use minecarts. The other thing that you might want to do is have a bit of a shower in your world. So there we go, we hit the button and the water comes out. We can go in here, we can do our shower until we're done, come out again, flick the button and it turns it off. So that again is pretty cool. Now the wiring for that, very simple as well. So it's on the blue block there. The wiring comes around like this, up like that, and into our dispenser right there. So a couple of little ideas as to how you can put this into practice. Um, as I say, I did keep it very simple today, but in the next episode, I'm gonna go into some more advanced concepts for you guys. So hopefully this has helped to start you on your journey with Redstone. I cannot recommend enough for you guys to learn Redstone. It's a fantastic part of Minecraft. It gives you so many opportunities. And trust me guys, if I can learn it, anyone can, because when I first started out, it scared me and I just didn't know what I was doing. And it's one of those things that once you practice it a bit, you'll find it starts to come very naturally to you. So hopefully you keep on with this. I hope this video has helped. If you do have any questions, please leave me a comment and I will do my best to answer. But for now, guys, that will be it for this episode. So as always, thanks very much for watching and I will see you next time.